Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Getting Started series. This multi-part series is designed to get users proficient in the tools and capabilities available within the Quick Terrain Modeler software. This chapter covers data sharing and disseminating both geospatial and non-geospatial data products. The topics are shown here. Let's get started by looking at the different ways of exporting individual geospatial files. Here I have a workspace loaded with many point clouds, service models, vectors, markers, routes, images, bookmarks, and even a movie loaded. Each individual file can be right-clicked to be exported in the appropriate file type. Keep in mind for point clouds, you may want to check out the LAS LAS custom, and this is where you can convert back and forth between LAS and LAS and the various point format types. Let's look a little further down and look at our surface models. I'm going to turn on my surface models and turn off my point clouds. I have two surface models loaded. I can right click on my DEM or DSM and export to a GeoTIFF DEM. That's probably the most common file type to export to. The various analytical layers that you've created, such as slope, HLZ, or line of sight, can be exported by right-clicking them in the layer tree and choosing Export Snapshot as either GeoTIFF or KMZ. If you want additional file formats for your point clouds and your surface models, you can go up to the top, Export, Export Model, choose your files to export, hit your drop-down at the top, and then you can export. As we work our way down the layer tree, I'm going to close all these, export your vectors to common file types such as shape, KML, and DXF. Your markers can be exported in a number of different ways, including various ASCII file formats, KML, KMZ, shape, and more. Routes can be exported in vector file formats as well, such as shape and KML. And you'll also see GPX file formats for your GPS units. Overlaid imagery can also be exported by right-clicking, export, and choosing export GeoTIFF. And we're gonna talk more about bookmarks and movies in just a little bit. If you recall from earlier chapters, all this information, all this data in the layer tree, as well as all of your settings, your units, your colors, your palettes, are all considered a workspace. We can save a local workspace, which points to paths to each of your existing file types, and saves out all your temporary files into what we call a local workspace. This is useful if you plan on returning to the data from the same machine, which again keeps the paths intact. If you plan on taking the data off of your machine, I would recommend using the Export Portable Workspace which exports all of your temporary and existing data into a new file, zipped up, and can be sent out and shared easily. To load these workspaces back in, simply click on the Open Workspace or drag the file into Qt Modeler. Sharing data with Google Earth has never been easier. You can click on the Export Layer Tree to KMZ, choose a new file to save to, click on Save, and Google Earth will automatically open with all of your data intact. You can see here that it also maintains the Qt layer tree organization, so you can simply expand your vectors, your markers, your routes, and your bookmarks as needed. This will also export all of your color scheme as well as your icons that might be attached, but does not include 3D data such as point clouds and surface models. Another way to integrate with Google Earth is I'm just temporarily going to turn this off. I'm going to slip my screen into half, and I'm going to click on the Synchronize Google Earth button. What that does is it syncs the camera position, the markers, the routes, and the vectors in real time. So as I move around QT Modeler, you can see Google Earth updating as I move. It'll even update as I move a marker. I'm going to hold down the K key, left click, and drag the arena marker. And you can see it moving in QT Modeler and in Google Earth as well. I'm going to go ahead and put that back onto the arena. I'm going to turn off the Google Earth sync. And let's move on to movies. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my layer tree. I'm going to right click where it says movies and click on create new movie. We have a couple of different ways to create a movie. As long as this window is open, every time I click a bookmark, so I'm going to click the Q key on my keyboard to create a bookmark, it's going to create a keyframe which remember what data sets are turned on, my camera orientation, and other settings such as water level and shadows. I'm going to turn off my DEM and turn on my point cloud. Turn off my vertex colors. And I'm going to go ahead and create a few more bookmarks, again by clicking the Q key as I move around. Going to a different angle, click on Q, go to a different location of my data, and click Q again. Now I can review my timeline, click on play, and Qt Modeler will automatically zoom me in. I have my dem turned on now. It turns off. Now my point cloud turns on, and as I continue moving down the track. You can then go back to the keyframe mode and refine this based on the hold time, 
the transit time to go from one bookmark to the other. You can make it constant with a defined velocity. And you can also add items such as orbits and spins. Once you're satisfied with the end result, go to Generate Movie and export out to a permanent file. Keep in mind that all movies created in Qt Modeler are also saved in your workspace when you export. And so that's a great way to share movies with others is through the workspace and other Qt Modeler licenses. Another non-geospatial way to export your data is by sharing with PowerPoint. Go ahead and set your scene the way you'd like it and click on the Export to PowerPoint button. Point to a PowerPoint template or use the one built into Qt Modeler. Define your title, caption, and image text as you'd like and go ahead and click Add Slide to Presentation. PowerPoint will automatically open and your image will be added as a new slide. Go back to Qt Modeler, maybe turn off your point cloud, turn on the various files and analysis that you performed, turning on the slope map, turning off the elevation colors, as well as the imagery, and clicking Add Slide to Presentation again. So this is a great way to quickly and easily create a PowerPoint slide deck from Qt Modeler directly. Another way to export both geo-registered and non-geo-registered data is by going up to Export, and then a few options for rendering your screen. This is a high-resolution screen capture in both geo-registered and non-geo-registered formats. To use registered image, you have to be in 2D mode, and using unregistered image is a great way to export Qt Modeler images to a large format plotter. Now let's take a look at our tiling tool. This is really a great way to share data as well. Sometimes you have data in very large collections or large file formats, and this is just a great way to manage it. I'm going to go to Import, Tiling Toolkit. I'm going to start by selecting the files that I'd like to bring in. I'm going to go into my Point Cloud folder, select my first four, and click Open. Qt Modeler loads those four files in as thumbnails here. I'm going to expand my window. Use your web mapping service to zoom in and out. Right click to pan, and you can identify a subset of your area by using this lasso tool. In this case, I want to retile all four files, so I'm going to click Select Extents. And essentially, in this tool, you want to go from left to right. So I'm going to define my new tiling size. It used to be 1,000. Now I'm going to do 250 meter tiles. I'm going to click on Calculate Tiles, and it does the calculation. So my four files become 64 files. I can in also import an existing tile structure and export this for later use. Now that I'm happy with my tiling scheme, I'm going to click on my naming convention. A couple different ways to, to do this. I'm going to start with my naming schema. And instead of doing the file name and then a number, I'm going to start with the name and then go to the coordinate. And my base name is going to be GS for our Getting Started series. And I want five significant figures here. I'm going to click on Rename. And you can see them updated over here on the right as the GS for Getting Started and the corner coordinate of each of these files. Next, I'm going to go down the line. And now I'm up to my point clouds. I have options for what kind of file type and format I want, as well as any kind of filtering. If I want DEMS or DSMs, I can enter that information here. And the analysis and options are helpful for managing size. Since I'm only exporting point clouds here, I'm going to click on my Select Output fol Folder. I'm going to go to my Getting Started folder, click on Select Folder, and click Do It. And once that's done processing, you can click on this button here to show a report. So I'll automatically export a report to Excel, which opens. And we have this tiling report that opens. It shows us each of our file names that were exported, including what kind of file format it was, how many points per return, the file extents for each, including the X, Y, Z, and intensity, as well as the various classifications. By scrolling down to the bottom, you'll see some summary information as well for all the files for the entire project area. If you have any questions or feedback about the content of this chapter or any other topics in the Quick Terrain Modeler, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.